So uh, I'm excited to be here. I want to talk about something that I, I called it creative hacking. And it's kind of funny because um, the conference folks took my whole long title and contracted to those two words. And uh, if you're excited about me presenting some interesting methodology or something, I'm not going to. I want to talk specifically about using some tools that we provide to make A-B testing with React Native easier. Whoop. And so a little bit about me. I'm a program manager at Microsoft. I'm part of the team working on Visual Studio Mobile Center, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, I'm also responsible for our JavaScript tooling. So the Visual Studio Code plugin for Apache Cordova and for React Native. And I'm a longtime contributor to Cordova. I'm just now starting to get into React Native. And like he said, I, I've written six books on mobile development. So uh, I know the space a little bit. So as far as creative hacking goes, in my mind, it's, it's not some cool methodology for delivering more thoughtfully written code. Um, basically, in my mind, I use that title because it's an idea where you're taking some tool and using it for a purpose for which it wasn't designed. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. But that's what I mean by creative hacking. So the idea is I want to cover how to go about doing A-B testing with React Native applications. And if you think about that process, you've got a few options available to you. The first one is I can deploy two or more versions of my app, which if you're a developer like I think all of you are, that's not a good thing to do. Uh, you could perhaps mock up two versions of an app, do it in React or do it in some sort of mock-up tool and deploy that to the world. And then the third option, the one I like the best, is utilize some capability which enables you to deploy one app but with different content. And then basically use, for each of these, analytics to track the user's interaction with the app and make decisions about which version of the application wins. Make sense? All right. So I want to talk about Visual Studio Mobile Center. How many here, I can't really see because there's a big light in my eyes, but how many folks here are familiar with, with Visual Studio Mobile Center? So just a few, huh? So they lied to me. They told me all of you guys knew all about Mobile Center. Oh, well. So let's talk about it. It was announced a year, year and a half ago. It's basically a cloud offering. It uh, exposes some capabilities on the Azure side in a mobile-friendly way. It includes things like build and test and deploy. So basically, the build piece is Visual Studio Team Services. The test piece is Xamarin Test Cloud. And the distribution piece of it, there's actually two options. Part of it is something called a Hockey App. You guys familiar with Hockey App? So this, these were acquisitions that Microsoft did in the mobile space over the last few years. Uh, the second piece of this is something called Code Push, which is what I'm going to use in my, my demonstration today. Uh, it also supports push notifications, crash detection, and analytics. So those are the parts that are in Mobile Center, and we're going to use three of them, uh, actually four of them, in the demonstration I'm going to do today. And uh, what my role at Microsoft is I recently joined the team, and I'm responsible for helping to craft any MBAS capabilities that go along with this. So the idea is that we want to take some Azure capabilities, uh, expose them or bundle them in a mobile-friendly way, and expose them through Mobile Center. So that's, that's what I do. It's my day job. All right, so I want to start by talking about code push. How many here are familiar with code push? OK, so slightly more than Visual Studio Mobile Center. All right, so uh, code push is essentially an open source project that we started a few years ago that gives developers the ability to push application updates to their mobile applications. The idea is that it does over-the-air updates to the application's content, supports Apache Cordova and React Native, uh, allows you to distribute an app with the base core content and then use a command line interface to deploy new versions of the application to the device. And the idea is, though, that it needs to um, not modify the app in any kind of fundamental way, which I thought was there, but it'll come up later. So on the, the client side, when, it, when you put together an application using Code Push, you have the ability to either configure your application so it automatically checks for updates and applies them whenever it sees that there's updates available in the cloud. The other option is you can manually trigger an update check based upon the application needs. So one, the developer initializes the app in such a way that Code Push uh, initializes, knows what it needs to do, it checks for updates and applies them, or either you implement a manual check for upgrade or 
or some sort of timed check or some other mechanism to deploy the application to the users. And then this is what I mentioned earlier. The, there's an expectation, not on our side, but expectation, especially on Apple's side, that you don't fundamentally change the application when you deploy updates over the air. Okay? So we all have to agree not to mess with the app when we do it. Just kidding. All right. So um, Code Push actually has some capabilities that you could use for A-B testing or at least validating a design through the CLI. Um, basically, when you, and I'll show you some of this later, but when you deploy an application update using the command line interface, you have the ability to use dash R or dash dash rollout and specify a numeric percentage, and then Code Push will automatically, de automatically deploy your update to that percentage of the user population. So if you have some major change you want to make to the application, you make the change, you deploy it to Code Push with this parameter, and then Code Push automatically deploys it to just a percentage of your user population. And then you use analytics and whatever other capabilities you have to track usage and figure out whether that version is useful enough or is liked enough or is functional enough that it works. If it does, you roll it out to the rest of the community. If it's not, you can roll it back and deploy some other version. All right? So that's the poor man's version of A-B testing with Code Push. But I, th I think we can do better. So another way to do it is you uh, deploy an updated version of the app to Code Push, and then use push notifications to send a deployment key to the app. And then based upon that deployment key, it pulls down the right version of the app, and then you test that way. Um, and then basically, there's code within the application that when it receives a push notification, figures out what it needs to do, and then does what it needs to do. And then the content uh, refreshes. There's two Ps in the word app. I don't know if you guys noticed that or not. It's supposed to be two Ps there. And away we go. And then you're going to use the crashes feature of Mobile Center to detect any crashes in the application. And then you're going to use analytics to track the user's activity. So wrapping together a few of the capabilities of Mobile Center all for this one purpose. So here's kind of a diagram that shows the same thing. In my mind, you know, when I first started talking about this scenario, this is what it meant to me. So you start with a base version of the application. You publish it using the, the um, Code Push CLI. It goes to the push service up in Mobile Center. And then from there, it deploys down to the device if the devices don't already have that version. Okay. And then you make a revision B or revision A of the application and publish those as well. So essentially, the Code Push service has multiple versions of your applications. And then each version of the application is identified by a unique deployment key. Okay? So you, you would probably maintain one set of code in GitHub, for example, and then use branches to control your AB versions. I don't imagine you would make a complete separate copy of your app. I would just use GitHub to manage that. But uh, when it comes to publishing it, you can publish from multiple branches independently into Code Push and then control it from there. So then once everything's deployed in the cloud, then you can use the push service to send a notification to the device to load the particular version. And then, like I said earlier, use crash detection and analytics to monitor usage and how the application is working and so on. All right. So I'm going to do a demo. Um, a couple things. I'm not at home. So I don't have a chicken or a pig to um, sacrifice to the demo gods. So I'm, I'm you know, just doing the best I can here. We'll see what happens. Um, for those of you that are heavily using the Wi-Fi network, if you could do me a favor and hop off the network for the next uh, 15 minutes or so, that would make me happy. We'll see what happens. You guys hungry? Are you awake? OK, whew, all right, cool. All right, let's see what happens here. So I have an application running on a, a device. Um, it's just basically some text and a button that you click on it. And then in my application, can everybody see this OK? I'm hoping it's big enough. If it's not big enough, come up closer. There's some free seats up here. So basically, there's, there's two aspects of where I've modified the application to make all of this work. The first one is in the constructor. So what I did was I, I made a variable called default key. And in default key, I pass in the connection ID for that base version of the application. I'll show you how I got that in a minute. And then in my constructor, 
I basically read async storage to figure out whether I've stored that another key. And then if I've stored that other key, I use it. Otherwise, I go ahead and sync using this default deployment key. So this code push dot sync is what actually connects to the server, pulls down the changes, and so on. All right, so this is the manually triggered process. I'm sorry, we're in your process. So, so that's the first piece of this. This is how I set up my code to understand that there's multiple versions and automatically update my core version of the application um, so that if, once the A-B testing is over, I'm still going to use that mechanism to deploy new versions of the application once I've decided on a path. And then the next piece of this is there's an event listener. So there's a push event listener that I've set. And in that push event listener, whenever a notification comes in, I then use the data that I send with that push notification to identify a different deployment key that I want to use. And that's how I get my AB version of the application running. So basically, I parse the deployment key, and then I do a code push dot sync to deploy that version of the application. So basically, the application runs with the default deployment key. When it gets a new one via push notification, it swaps out that version of the application on the fly. Cool stuff? Yeah. All right. And the rest of this is just a standard everyday um, application. So if you look at my application, you'll see that I have um, a button called uh, Press Me. That's this guy right here. Currently, it's this color. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy a new version of the application and then use push to swap it in. So I need some audience participation. So should I do red, blue, or green? I heard red. We're going to do red. All right, so I'm going to comment out that line. I'm going to uncomment red. And then over my command line, and by the way, I'm going to cheat because I want to make sure I get this right. Um, oh, here we go. So if I... Yeah, let's do this. So if I do code push, code push dash ls. So I want to list my code push sessions. And then I have a name. Oops, I did that wrong. Yeah, that's why I copy this stuff. That's what I wanted. Oh, there we go. I did it wrong. I want to do code push. Deployment. So if I use this command line tool, it'll show me all of the deployments I have defined up on the code push service. So right now, there's a production deployment, and there's something called staging. So if I go into Mobile Center, and I look here in my, whoops, let's try this again. Try this again. So if I go in here to my application, I go to distribute, and code push, you'll see that I have multiple versions. And right now, I have this production and staging version of the app. Okay, So what I want to do is I want to change that. But before I do that, let me show you how to get the deployment key. So if I add a dash k to the end of this and execute the command, it'll give me the same data, but it'll also give me the deployment keys for those particular versions of the application. Okay, Everyone see that? This right here? All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a deployment, and I'm going to create a deployment called revision A. And once again, I'm lazy, so I'm going to copy that directly from the, from the document. So now I'm telling it, I'm telling CodeBush, create a deployment, add one for this particular app, and then call it revision A. So now when this runs, and if I go back here and refresh my page, you'll see there's a new one now called Revision A. Okay, And if I go back here and run that again, here's my deployment key for Revision A. Now, I want to copy that because I'm going to need that in a minute. Ah, uh, crikey. And doing this, without a keyboard is really, really hard, or without a mouse. All right, so there's my deployment key. All right, so now I have a deployment key. And what I want to do is I want to deploy that version of the application. So what I'm going to do 
is I am going to, actually, I want to not have that. I want to do a different command first. So I want to deploy this. Actually, let's do this. Store that deployment key so I can get it later. Yep. So now what I would do is I've modified the application. So I now have converted this to red, right? I've saved my changes. And I'm going to go back to the command line and paste that in. And so now I'm publishing this version of the application to that deployment area called revision A. So it's reading the app, processing it, doing some cool stuff. I'm going to drink some water while I wait. I don't have any jokes. Sorry, I've already told all my jokes. There we go. So it's done. So now if I go over here and I go into my revision A area, there's the deployment of my application. So I'm ready to go. So I've got the production version. I've got this new, slightly different version of the app. And then to um, make this work, what I do is I go into push notifications. I'm going to send a notification. Okay, woohoo is a technical term. And then down here, when I have, I have the ability to send custom data along with my push notification. So I, I give it a key of deployment key. And then I copy my deployment key. And then when I want to send my notification, if I want to send it to everybody, I can. But what I really want to do for this A-B testing thing is I want to actually define an audience. And I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to show you how it works anyways. Um, and then when I define an audience, I have the ability to uh, give it a name and then add a series of rules that define the audience for that push notification. So for example, if I want to send this version of the application to everybody in a particular country, particular carrier, a uh, particular device model or OS version, I can do that by using one or more of these properties. All right, so I build my criteria, I send it to my audience, and I'm good. Uh, for this demo, I'm merely going to send it to all registered devices just because it's easier. There's my message. And when I send my notification, I should have had this already running, shouldn't I have? When I send my notification, you can see that a notification was received with the text that I sent in my message. And then here's my deployment key. And then code push woke up, and it went out and downloaded that version of the application. So how do we feel about the demo gods? Do they like us or not like us? We'll see. So if I go here, and I kill my application, All right, what color should that button be? Red. So when I go in, my app is red. The demo gods were nice to us today. So that's basically it. That is uh, everything I wanted to show you. So I, I made some screenshots here so you can see the difference between the regular deployment and deployment with dash K and then the codes in here as well. So uh, that's basically my session. Uh, some resources available for you. Uh, first of all, take a look at Visual Studio Code. I'm sorry, Visual Studio Mobile Center. It's a free preview for now, which means you can sign up for an account. You can use it to build, test, and deploy your applications. Um, it'll go into production sometime relatively soon. Um, and then there'll be, it'll be a for-fee for service, but there should still be low-cost or free options that you can use to really prove whether this is going to work for your environment or not. I've published the source code on GitHub slash jwargo, so you can have the same application that I just demonstrated. And then uh, what I showed in this session was a um, full demo of something one of my former colleagues uh, wrote about. So this is a link to his original blog post. Uh, Parashu used to be part of the team. He used to own the, the JavaScript uh, plugins and so on for Visual Studio Code. 
Uh, he's since moved on, and so I took over his responsibilities, but this is a, a good overview of how, how that demonstration works. So I'm, I have 23 seconds left before we go to questions. Do we have questions? Ah, we have questions. Matai, we, we have, have questions. questions. Yeah, we're good. Let's go together for the questions, yeah. So let's go for the first one. Does Apple actually allow apps that use code push? Yeah, it's, uh, code push is several years old. It's been out there. Um, a Apple has specific guidelines over what technologies you can use, um, but JavaScript and so on is supported. So, so like I said, it's my understanding that they have a, a restriction that whatever you push to the app using code push does not fundamentally change the nature of the app. That's going to get you in trouble. Yeah. But if you add new content, add new features, move things around, I don't think they'll care. Okay. But, but I mean, there's no de definite answer on that, right? Because they do what they want to do. <laughs> what will be the pricing of Mobile Center and, the co and Code Push? So I know, but I don't know. I know, but I can't tell you. <laughs> uh, just understand that a lot of this is available today through other products. Uh, Code Push is a free service that's available to you today. Um, so Mobile Center, when it does go live, is going to have fees around uh, testing on live devices and build and things like that. But I, I don't imagine that this particular service is going to okay. have a cost. I can't, I can't say too much. <laughs> OK. So uh, next question, does it work on Windows Phone? Does it work on Windows Phone? No. Okay. Okay. Now, hang on. You were expecting some marketing <laughs> answer. You weren't expecting that answer, were you? So, the, um, without going too deep into the weeds, there's a f uh, there's a fundamental architecture around security in Windows apps that make this not possible. And it's been around for a couple of years. And I think as much as we want to fix it, we're much happier with having the security in place yes. than breaking it to allow this. Okay. Uh, so users who disable push notifications can be targeted. Is that correct? If they've disabled push notifications? Yeah, I cannot. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think this will work. Okay. If, it's, if they've disabled push notifications, there's nothing we can do to get around it. How code push handles if uh, deployment went wrong? I have no idea. <laughs> so, um, uh, so code push, well, there's two parts to this, right? So the push notification triggers the code push. Um, Code push is going to pull down the complete code change and then uh, try to apply it. So it's not going to modify the app until it knows it has all of it. And uh, as far as I know, it's not going to, it, it'll roll back to the previous state if the upgrade fails. The beauty of this is it's an open source solution, right? So the CLI and all the tools for code push are available up in GitHub. So uh, go take a look. Next question. How is the security handled? Is there a risk of malicious code uh, to get pushed to our users? So good question. Um, you saw that I worked with that, co that deployment key. Uh, I, I shamelessly showed them up on the screen. I'm going to delete my application when I'm done so you can't mess with my demo. But that deployment key is all you need to be able to mess with somebody else's application. So protect that. <laughs> uh, if you've done that, so the application name is used and that deployment key is used. So I would protect that information. Uh, and that's the best way to avoid that. We have time for two more questions, so let's go through them. Is there a way to revert a specific version already rolled out for a certain percentage? So I hinted at that in my mm -hmm. session, and um, I'm not sure. And I, and I apologize. I'm only three months at Microsoft, so you have to give me a break. But um, <laughs> I, I was talking to the developer lead, and he said that Code Push will always deploy the latest version of a deployed deployment key. Mm -hmm. So to revert, all you have to do is switch that key, and then it'll automatically pull down the latest one and overwrite your changes. Mm -hmm. But don't try to push a change to an existing deployment key and then try to roll back within that deployment key. Does that make sense? Not to me, but it's OK. Yeah. Does that make sense to you guys? Somebody say yes or no. Uh, and that okay. was a resounding I yes. yes. Yeah, I heard a yes. One of them. Yeah. yeah. If not, <laughs> reach out to me afterwards. I'll explain. And one more question. What are the benefits comparing to Docker solutions? Docker solutions? Yeah. To a mobile center? Mm -hmm. Really? I'm just reading it from the screen, you know. <laughs> Docker, yeah. Um, so that's a tough one, because I'm not really sure what the question means. So I mean, Docker is a completely different technology. It's a technology for deploying applications virtually. And this is cloud services for Microsoft. So 
I, I can't answer that. That's a wrong question, guys. Okay, good. I can try, but it, I'd no, fail No, 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 no worries. Good. So let's end on a positive note. You can choose one of these. Code push is great. Fastlane is also great. What do you think about integrate code push with Fastlane? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, that's a great idea. I'll talk to the development team. And I got one more here. It says, okay. uh, this looks a bit clumsy. Well, <laughs> it was a five-minute demo, guys. <laughs> I mean, you, you'll script it, and you'll make it easier. But I just, I had five minutes. <laughs> great. John, appreciate it. Thank you much. You're yeah. welcome. Do I take this with me? Yes, you can. Thank you.